What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, another solution from the AP College Board. I will leave a link to the question down in the description below. You could check it out. I highly recommend, guys, do the question first before looking at the solution so you know the mistakes that you might have made. Let's dive right into it. Essentially, what's going to happen is we're going to have a pendulum. It's going to swing down and strike this ball, which is then going to create some sort of horizontal projectile. It gives you the height or the distance in the Y direction. And it also gives you delta x in the x direction as well, or the range that the ball travels. They give you the mass of the two balls. This is 0.66. This is 0.22. They also give you the angle at which this item is dropped from. So it says calculate the speed of the 0.66 ball just before the impact, so pretty much when it's right about here. Well, for part A, we know that there's going to be some sort of gravitational potential energy, which is going to be converted into kinetic energy. So if you look at mgh, that's just going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. We don't care about the masses too much. So the velocity just before impact is going to be the square root of 2gh. But I don't really know h, but this is a skill that you guys are going to need to know when it comes to a pendulum. If this is the length of the pendulum string, and at the bottom right here, this is also the length. Guys, this delta H, this height right here, is found by taking the adjacent of theta. So the total length, which is really this, right? That's L minus this adjacent part, which is going to be the cosine theta L. That's what's H. So that's how we're going to find H here. So the length of the string is this minus the cosine of 60 degrees. So H, it's gonna equal 0.3 meters. So if I plug all this in here, we're gonna get the velocity. Just before the impact, it's gonna be 2.4 meters per second. And this is of the, I'll just call this the 0.66 ball initially. Calculate the speed of this ball immediately after the collision. Well, essentially what that is gonna be is that's gonna be the V initial in the X direction of a horizontal projectile. So what I need to know is I need to know the time that it took to fall, and then if I know the distance it traveled and the time that it took to get there, I can find its initial speed. So first I'm gonna find time, and I'm gonna do that using x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared for the y direction, because the y direction is time. So 1.2, equals zero, there's no y initial speed, one half, 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm using 9.8 because that's what's on the reference table. And they did not tell me I could use 10 here, times t squared. I get t to equal 0.49 seconds. I can then plug that into the same formula, x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. We know that the acceleration in the x direction for a horizontal projectile is always zero. 1.4 meters equals what they want us to solve for times 0.49 seconds. V naught is gonna be 2.8 meters per second. And this is the initial velocity of the 22 ball. But remember, this is after the collision. For part C, calculate the final speed. So we know the initial speed. Now I want to know the final speed. And I can use that using conservation momentum. P before equals P after. Now before, this object was not moving, so it had no momentum. So we have the MV of the 0.66. That's going to equal the MV of the 0.66 plus the MV of the 0 0.22. And this right here is what it wants to solve for. If I manipulate that, I get the V final of the 0.66 is going to be equal to the MV initial of the 0.66 minus the MV final of the 0.22 divided by the M of the 0.66. I'll plug that in over here, 0.66 kilograms times 2.4. That is the initial meters per second minus 0.22 kilograms times 2.8 meters per second divided by 0.66. I get the V final to equal 1.5 meters per second. So this is the V final of the 0.66 kilogram block. Indicate the direction of motion of the 0.66 ball. The direction is going to be to the right. We found that this initial speed was positive, so I call positive to the right. So this answer, because it came out positive, it is also to the right. 
he wants us to calculate the height that the ball rises. So how high over here now is the pendulum going to swing after the collision? Well, we are going to have some kinetic energy initial of that ball. And that is going to be converted backwards, just like we did here, into some gravitational potential energy. So I'm going to have 1 half mv squared is equal to mg, my new height. So 1 half 0.66 the speed we just found, 1.5 meters per second. That information would be squared. 0.66, so we can see those are just going to cancel out. G is 9.8. So the new height that it's going to go is to 0.11 meters. And for part F, they want to know, is this an elastic collision, yes or no? Remember, guys, we decide, we decide if something is elastic or inelastic by the kinetic energy initial if that is equal or not equal to the kinetic energy final if they are equal it is elastic if it is not equal it is going to be inelastic so i'm going to find the kinetic energy of the system initially which is just from the speed of this ball because this ball did not contribute any kinetic energy to the system before that's one half m v squared one half 0.66 kilograms times the initial speed 2.4 squared, that is equal to 1.9 joules. Kinetic energy final of the system is going to be the kinetic energies of both balls. So I'm going to have 1 half 0.66 times 1.5 squared, that's right here, plus the 1 half 0.22 times 2.8 squared. The kinetic energy after is equal to 1.1.3 joules. These are different, therefore no, it is not an elastic collision. I hope this helps guys. If it did, give the video a thumbs up. I'll catch you on the next one.